Hello everyone and welcome to today's class of English. On your screen you can see the class information and all the content from yesterday's class. All this was put up on the 1st of June and I really hope you have gone through all these three videos. If you have not, pause this video, stop it right here and watch all three. Because, uh, you know, education, what do you get? The subjects that you study, the topics that you read, they should be connected to you actual real life incidences you cannot just read a poem and simply go ahead and write questions and answers if you do not understand how it affects your day-to-day -day life your nation your country your state it's very necessary that you read sorry you watch these videos first and then you move forward to the poem as you might have guessed uh, today's poem is uh, an elementary school classroom in a slum it's written by stephen spender now it's very necessary for you to know that this poem was written about London, schools in London, in a school, not all schools, a school in London, which was an elementary school. And if you if you look at the time in which he lived, Stephen, he didn't live for much long years, all right? Uh, well, in fact, he did live for very long, but it's necessary for you to understand that this poem was written in the 1930s, you know, years before and after that, a time when London and England and Europe as a whole was going through a lot of economic depression, was not a developed country at a point of time, and had slums as well. In 2020, it's unimaginable to think about slums in the West, especially in England, but the time and period in which this poem was written, there was. Uh, I hope you have the book, most of you do. I remember looking into your books in the classroom. If you don't, of course, you have the PDF. This is the poem which has been taken up in the screen over here in the presentation as you will see it will help you and as you can observe uh, well i've missed out the word classroom over here never mind you know the actual name it's an elementary school classroom in a slum it's easy for you to understand the poem now moving forward uh well the poem which you saw over there these the lines of the poem have been broken down and meanings have been highlighted we shall first begin with this box in pink which says the poem is made of largely non-sentences, non-sentences. In other words, sentences with no main verb. Please identify this quality. It is the written equivalent. It is like writing. It's a written equivalent of flashing still images on a screen. So as you will read the poem, it will feel as if someone is flashing lots of images on a screen. Okay. This is what the poem is more about. There are a lot, a lot, a lot of images in the initial part. If you read the screen, you could pause this video. There are so many things that have come down. The line starts with far, far from gusty waves. Gusty is, you know, strong, far, powerful waves, winds. The children's faces, full stop. So, you know, the faces here are away from the gusty waves. If you read this paragraph, these children are cut off from the hustle and bustle of life. The rest of the poem makes clear how cut off the how cut off from the world these children are. They cut off from what? They cut off from development. They cut off from a normal growth. There is something wrong with each child making them social misfits. This is why they're cut off. This is why they are far from away from the gusty waves. Why are they cut off? We'll see to it. These okay like rootless weeds you know like which is a simile rootless as in these children are social misfits their faces are lost looking and deprived they are not rooted to the normal regular well-to-do society their faces look like rootless weeds their hair torn round their pallor now in this case if you observe pallor there's little sunshine in england pallor is very little sunshine all right it's more like uh, the narrow dirty streets in england slums don't let in light you know don't let in light and are unhealthy as i just told you this poem was written by a british poet in the 1930s and uh, if you observe carefully you know this is the time when there was a lot of depression economic depression going on it was just after the spanish flu if you have noted and uh, you know the hair tone around their pallor pallor is the entire environment of less sunshine it's demoralized it's you know it's unhealthy that entire thing is called pallor if you read this paragraph in the bottom if i can wait for this to go away 
yes in the bottom you will see in 1930s this is the block in the bottom of the screen in 1930s living in a slum was an appalling experience because of very poor buildings narrow streets and bad hygiene during 1930 depression there was huge un unemployment so despite government government feeding schemes people were near starvation and children in particular suffered from food deficiency disease i'm sure you've read about food deficiency diseases you'll get to know about them more now as the poem continues this is the third line the tall girl with with her weighed down head you know her head is weighed down weighed down out of what out of sadness out of depression out of unhealthy hair the paper seeming boy you know the boy who who seems like paper you know uh the paper seeming boy with rat size you know he has eyes right like rats why rats eyes are furtive frightened eyes have you ever seen a rat have you ever seen its eyes it's always scared it's always frightened it runs away the moment you try to you know get near to it it's always looking for danger the boy is feeling like that the stunted unlucky air of twisted bones you know unlucky air of twisted bones this line clearly indicates that some child is the heir to obviously you know your heir to your parents now the child is unlucky because it is heir to twisted bones which means his or her parents had some disease if you look carefully it, there's a comma and then it continues reciting a father's null disease the g is not pronounced null disease in this case null disease generally refers to rickets probably rickets a children's disease caused by a lack of vitamin d if you want to know what rickets is this is a problem of rickets when legs are bent because of lack of vitamin d as it's mentioned over here and a few other reasons so this child this child over here has inherited right this inherited disease from his parents something that should not have happened he's listen from the desk all right this is there's this is a continuation number 5 just a moment yes number 5 reciting a father's disease comma see the line starts here the stunted unlucky heir of twisted bones comma reciting a father's disease his lesson from the desk what lesson is he learning the lesson is the boy speaking what he was supposed to learn is that the lesson he's learning in the school or is the lesson that you know he he's learning death he's learning disease there's a dichotomy in the phrase and this is the beauty of uh, poetry at back of the dim class obviously you know the meaning of the word dim at back of the dim class one unnoted sweet and young here is another boy who is being referred to who is at the sitting of the end of the class but he is sweet he is young his eyes live a dream you see if you look into this part antithesis with rat size in line 4 his eyes live a dream here is which means here we have a boy who is who has not got the eyes of a rat who it seems is slightly better than the other students his eyes live a dream of a squirrel's game if you think about a squirrel a squirrel mostly lives inside a tree in a tree room other than his other than this as you can imagine small children have the tendency of dreaming of daydreaming and maybe he is inside a classroom but maybe he imagines that he is a squirrel he is inside a tree room this one boy seems to have aspirations and hopes and ideas beyond the lack of dreams around him he is bit of a contrast to the sadness that is there in this poem okay continuing line number 9 are sar cream walls think about a wall which is sar it's unpleasant here the word sar is not about taste but about the unpleasantness donations donations which political parties and governments have given for the school shakespeare's head no not obviously not actual shakespeare's head but you know a picture of his face or a bust cloudless at dawn civilized dome riding all cities in this case it refers to you know the shakespeare's head which is cloudless at dawn cloudless in the morning you can imagine if you know it london is known for having very bad weather and the poet here is trying to bring in the idea of you know when you feel really low when it's supposed to be a sunny day but it's actually been cold and it's been raining for 3 and 4 days this is the idea that the poet is trying to get you know civilized dome riding all cities in this case the donations which are like civilized domes from a developed social system having smooth social manners riding all cities bell flari 
Tyrolese Valley, Tyrolese region in Europe. In this case, he's saying that the images, I'm sure in your classroom also you've seen lots of pictures of themes and objects and topics connected to your education. Just like that, they have these images, these pictures of civilization, these pictures of flowers and areas of the Tyrolese Valley where they have a very good idea, good life, which is in big contrast with the classroom that they have inside. Open-handed map awarding the world its world, and yet, you know, the, 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 these maps are awarding the world of the children the world. In this case, the first world refers to the world of the children, and the second world refers to the actual big world. And yet, for these children, these windows, not this world, are a world. This is a bit tricky. It has been explained over here. The world offered on maps and pictures on the walls have nothing to do with these children. The grimy windows of the classroom represent the limit of the world. Try to understand. As I just showed you, two worlds. One world is the life of the, the world of the children. The other world is the actual world out there, which they can never get. Well, at least not till now. This is all they know. Everything they know beyond these windows is blurred by fog and hemmed in by a grey sky. Okay, children, these windows, not this world, our world, okay, where all the futures painted with fog. The poet here trying to not just literally bring in the idea of fog, but also the idea of sadness. If you remember the lives of, uh, you know, Mukesh and Saheb, you know, the characters which we studied, you can find a lot of similarities over here lost spring that was the chapter a narrow street sealed in with a lead sky this fifth line number 15 is kind of the location of the school it's in the narrow street it's sealed with the lead sky now the lead does not mean the actual metal but you know the color of the dark clouds which look like lead it's very heavy far far from rivers capes and stars of wood the, the poet now in page line number 16 says their physical presence is very, you know, problematic. Surely Shakespeare is wicked. The map, a bad example, with ships and sun and love tempting them to steal. I'm not going to explain page number 3 today. This is the end of today's video. Please try to read the poem, at least the first 16 lines. This is a slightly longer poem. It's not really difficult, but I'll cut down into two parts. Uh, for your reference, if you have checked out the website of Teach for India, you should. If you have not, you it's really time you do. It gives you a good idea because the poem we just read seems very sad, seems very dystopian. That is not really the case. One more interesting fact. Uh, this is Stephen Spender, the poet, and he has a nice quotation. When you read and understand the poem, comprehending its rich and formal meanings, then you master chaos a little. That's a very interesting way of saying that you can understand chaos. Ugh. Uh, well, that's about it. I hope the poem, the explanation did make some sense. I'll move on to the rest of the explanation in the next class. Until then, you still have time to revisit the other videos and to read the poem on your own. Thanks for listening.